Hello everyone, in this tutorial we will be creating a Ghost Rider. We will animate an already created model and ignite its skull with fire using the Turbulence of D plugin. Look at this example from the original movie, look at this fire, we will try to recreate it, but we will do animation at first. So, let's go! Here is TurboSquid website where I downloaded this model for $80. Here the format we need. Also, FBX and OBG will work as well. You can use this model or choose another one for yourself. After all, it is necessary to set fire to a skull. Let's import our model. We can see that this model consists of one object. The skull is not attached to the body, but, however, it's one object. No complexity, just the simplest model. I will just set it to the origin of the coordinates by position. And let's set up the project first. I will put it 25 frames per second. Let's also increase the number of frames of the composition to 500. So let's go to the render settings, and here I will just change the camera size to full HD and set the rendering of all frames. Ok, it's done. Now we will export our object to Mixamo, where we will embed a rig with joints. We export the object as FBX. Here all settings are set by default. And click OK. Select the folder where we want to save our object, click Save and that's it. Now we go to a folder where we saved our file, we made sure that everything is in the right place, and after that we go to the Mixama website. Mixama also has a user-friendly interface that makes it easy to use. It offers a wide range of pre-made animations that can be easily customized and applied to your own 3D characters. For example, this huge creature. We can see that he was set in D pose at first. If we go to the Animation tab, we can select some animation here. And now our character is working. A very interesting platform that immediately displays how things work here. According to the settings, there are hand width and overdrive. That means the speed with which this animation is played. Also, our animation can be trimmed to export just 14 frames instead of 67, for instance. You can just explore what animation options are there. There is a convenient search here. So, in general, experiment. In this animation, a person is petting a pet. Now this rig has been applied to our monster. This means that we have an object and there is a skeleton. This rig will automatically fit into our object and deform its polygons like skin. Separate joint is responsible for a separate area of polygons. Let's upload our FBX file into the upload window and try with our own model. Everything is displayed correctly, but if you have it opened incorrectly, you can rotate along the Y or X axis as well as along the Z axis if suddenly your hero is upside down. We just need to set these points here as shown in a picture. If your model has no fingers, you can also choose here no fingers, but I use the standard option here. Also, you can turn off the symmetry checkbox or use it if your character is created symmetrically. It happens that this needs to be turned off, but in this case, I will just adjust all the points as shown in a picture. And press Next, so that the software analyzes our object and embeds its skeleton inside. And now to our object, which was just a simple object, were applied skeleton and animation to it. Once again, a rig 
is a deformer in which each joint is responsible for a specific part of the object. Let's change the animation to the sword and shield collection. First of all, there is a problem with the skull and also with one shoulder. Our new skeleton doesn't quite understand which parts of the head should be attached to the head joint and the same with the shoulder. This can be configured in one of the ways that I will show you right now. We need to find a deep pose connect it to our hero and um, save the object as FibiX. T-Pose contains only one frame, no more is needed. Here I will select 30 frames per second and click download. We will come back here with an improved model, but right now what we downloaded we import into Cinema 4D and tell our rig exactly where the head is, where the shoulders are and which joints should be responsible for which particular part of our object. Uh, here we have opened our model with a T-pose. I will probably remove the camera, we don't need it now. Um, look at how our skeleton has deformed. This is because the individual polygons attach to the wrong joints, which are highlighted in white. Each phalanx is responsible for the corresponding finger, and after looking in detail, we see that in general the skeleton itself is quite well settled, except for the head, but now you will see everything in more detail. Go to Character and select the Weight tool. This tool shows which area is subject to which joint. If we open it, we will see joints. The joint of the spine, for instance. We select it and see here an orange selection. There is, if we bend this joint like this now, we will see that everything that was highlighted in orange bends, but according to the hierarchy, Everything else that is subordinate to the backbone bends with it. The same goes for here. We have selected the leg joint. If we rotate it, a part of the object located in the zone will deform along with this joint. If we press the right mouse button on some part of our object, we will see that this is what the joint is responsible for. This is the right shoulder. The program took part of the face and matched it to the shoulder joint. Mixamo didn't recognize our object correctly. Let's help fix it. We go to hips, open spline, find our head, and now we see that the program has taken the wrong part at all. The joint has subdued the polygons that are closest to it, but this is not the head. It's generally incorrect that the head joint is behind the back. This needs to be edited, but we won't go into it for now. So select the way to turn off visible only to select all polygons, even those that are covered. Let's go over here in a head, find the right angle, set the radius larger and select just everything that we consider to be the head. Now, if we paint over everything, the program understands that this is all one object. It's all the head. Now our skull will move with that joint. Now there is no green spots, if we select the shoulder, we can see that the head polygons no longer move with the shoulder joint. And uh, if you paint with the brush holding down control, then you will remove selection from certain areas. It's also quite a useful thing. Here I will add... I must say right away that we will not be able to set everything up 100% perfectly right now. And I will not bother so much because 
adjusting the weights well takes a lot of time, especially if our model is one object without selections. But the main thing you will learn. You will have all the knowledge in order to understand how it works and animate your own models on your own. Select some joint and show the program where its area by drawing over the object. Always control hold down on the contrary to remove the selection from certain areas. Here we see one point left on. We paint it over and it returns to the rest of the polygons. When you on your own try experimenting and do something with your object, you will immediately understand everything completely and everything will work out for you. It's not difficult at all, just experiment. Now, I will turn on visible only so that what is behind this color will not be removed. Uh, to be honest, there is a lot of work here. It's necessary to carefully highlight all the zones, but we will make it acceptable. If we go to the way tool and select smooth and draw like this on the territory here, our brush will smooth everything a little, add blurring between the boundary of one joint and another. There is the transition will be smoother. If you see that you have zones where the object breaks very hard, try using the smooth brush to smooth the area. Here we can see that a specific section of the chain is distorted here between the spine and the shoulder. Well, let's use the absolute brush to try to correct the deformation a little. Select part of the chain and use absolute to paint over this area. Yes, we see that the chain has melted into the body, but our hero will not turn from this side, so in this case we will skip it. You can of course experiment, as I said. Now I will just briefly correct this object. I select individual joints and try to tell the program whether this area belongs to this joint. Now using the smooth brush, I'm working on a chain. We see that in principle, more or less it has moved out. So, all my object is ready. The main thing is that we subordinated the skull. We gave the program an idea of where the skull is located. And now we export everything again to Mixamo. But now the weights are set so that Mixamo calculates everything correctly this time. We also export FBX. And now if we load our last file to Mixamo, we will no longer need to readjust the weights, since the program will understand that this skeleton is a Mixamo skeleton. The weights are already in there and everything will work fine. Ok, now there are no distortions. Once again, we uploaded our clean object into Mixamo, downloaded it with built-in T-Pose, adjusted the weights in Cinema 4D and put it back to Mixamo, which successfully accepted all our changes done in Cinema 4D. Now remove the T-Pose and search for the animation I used, Aerial. We connect it and we see that our object is already jumping. Here he doing a trick. We have just created an animated Ghost Rider. We save and now have one more file, but with animation. And let's download another file with a different animation called Battle Cry. Yeah, one more animation. We will connect them together, make one of the two in Cinema 4D, a bit later. Create a new folder, I will call it Mixamo, and here I will drop 
all the animation files we just downloaded. Open them in Cinema 4D. We have a new project opened. We can see that animation has been applied to our model. Now our joints, which we had before, have keyframes. Each one is animated. If you select each bone, you will see that it has keyframes. And with the help of the weight tag and the skin deformer, our character deforms along with the joints. I will remove the camera. We don't need it here. Set your object so they are convenient to look at. And let's group it and name this group the same as our animation is called. Aerial. Now I will cut with Ctrl X from here and move the group to our original project where we all started. We will put everything here. It's always convenient to open everything in one project and save some initial version, which contains all the animations and models, so that later if something happens, you always know where all the files are. Do not open several different projects and look for where what was missing. Let's import the second animation here as well. Click OK. If animation is not being imported, make sure there is a check mark here. Let's check the animation. There is animation. Again, we group everything except the camera. Let's send it to a group and delete the camera. And we will call this the same as our animation is called. Now, Ctrl X. Ctrl we paste Battlecry here, so we have one big project. I will close it all. One big project in which we assemble two animations, one T-pose and one source object. We should save incremental and Cinema 4D will save our project under the new version. Now I will show you how to combine our two animations. If we only turn on Arial, we will see that we have an animation consisting of almost a hundred keyframes. And if we turn on Battlecry, we'll see that the animation here consists of about 70 frames. We need to combine these keyframes and those keyframes to make our animation last longer, consisting of different actions, the trick and the terrible roar. We go into Animate and choose to add motion clip. Call it the same as our animation, Battlecry, and click OK. If we go to the timeline to our dope sheet, we will see that our entire animation in keyframes is recorded in a separate take. If I select our animation here and drag it here, you will see that after one take has finished, it starts again, and you can add the same take here a third time. If I remove part of the animation, for example from the last take, then we will see that the position of the joints twitches between the cut. The joint of the two takes here is different, and if we put them side by side, it will be very noticeable. It's the same if we connected our first and second animation. But if I make a smooth transition like this, I just slide one piece onto another, we will see that the program smoothly adjusts the position of bones to the next piece. The position of each joint of one take are transformed into the positions of the joint of the other take, so it's a kind of morphing. So, let's scale it down. Select our first animation with a trick, 
click add motion clip and be careful not to check the box next to remove included animation from the original object. Otherwise, it will remove the animation itself and you will have an empty file. Yes, now look, if we add a second sequence to the end, our hero will immediately start doing a trick with such a hard transition. But if we do everything smoothly, we will see that his legs and arms begin to shift from one animation to the next. This will make it easier to see. We see the joints being rearranged. This is not very good because the animation itself and the character's poses are different, but we want it to start its terrible roar when the jump animation ends. We are changing the order of the animations. Now we have a rail first, as intended. If we look at the joint, we will see that there is a trouble here. Everything is bad because they are in different positions and the smooth transition from one position of the bones to another looks like riding on a travel later. And we definitely should fix it. We need to make the second animation so that it starts when the first ends. But, if we simply change the position or nest an object in a null object and then move it, it will not work. This only works if we create a pivot to this object. Select our take, the second one. Go to the Advanced tab and press Create Pivot. Now, wherever we move the anchor point, our object will always move there. Again, this doesn't work in a different way. Let's select our pivot and move it under the position where the first animation ends. Let's display all windows for more accurate work. Let's rotate our bones a little. There is nothing complicated here, we just created an anchor point for our second animation and set approximately where it should stand and at what position it should start when our first animation ends. We will also make a smooth transition later and the transition will hardly be noticeable. The legs are now aligned, the arms are aligned and in general everything is set up. Now we see that there is a jump, but a small one, much better than it was when our Ghost Rider altogether flew away in the other direction. Now we just make a smooth transition. And now our character uses the first joints in the beginning and then begins to deform under the other joints. It may sound complicated, in fact, everything is very simple. We just added the takes. Make sure that your model has enough time to land so that it doesn't look too harsh. I turn off the display of joints now. They can be hidden. Let's try to see how our Ghost Rider is doing. As if he doesn't have enough time after landing. So, a little further. Uh, this is a fine-tuning, see for yourself as you like best, how it looks more organic. By the way, if we drag by the edge of a sequence, our animation will slow down. Now it has become a little bit slower, and in this way you can do slow motion. Now the speed is 120%. Our animation covers 160 frames. We made the animation, so let's see what kind of animation we have now. We put two animations together. Everything is cool, you are almost super animators of humanoid models in Cinema 4D. Delete everything that you don't need. Let's delete the texture that we don't need. Delete all unused and duplicated materials. Let's go over here and remove one of this. No, let's remove this one. 
We use just to rig the skeleton with animation and we don't need the object itself. If we delete it, nothing will happen and nothing will be lost, because only one model is used as basis, and we use only joints from the lower group. You could even download only joints. There is such an option, by the way. Let's call it main. Let's move everything else to the group. We call it other. Fine. Now we need to create a camera. For the maximum front view without distortion, I will set parallel. Turn it on. I set uh, this so that the camera is always parallel to the hero. No matter how we rotate here, it doesn't distort the hero in any way. Just in case, I'm showing how I did it. If you need, you can animate the camera or track it, it's up to you. Uh, we put the protection tag to not move anything when the camera is active. Ok, now let's adjust the texture. I will turn on reflectance. Now we have reflection, but it reflects too hard. In this case, I want a more glossy reflection so that it shines a little bit like it was made from a magazine, I don't know, just my fancy idea. Anyway, we always delete the default specular and add GGX. There are more settings here and right now specular is obsolete a little bit. We set the electric in Fresno and we don't need to change anything in custom. I will just trace the IOR. This either increases or decreases the intensity and size of the reflection areas. We see that we have such glare. Ok, I love the way that close of reflection looks, especially if we now add our environment map here. Let's create sky. Add a texture and add our file to this texture. This is a picture of hell. Press no and now reflection is taken from our image. That's it. We have the texture of hell and you can see that there are reflections of red color on a hero. We will add tag compositing and disable scene by camera. Now the camera will not see our sky, but the red light remains in a reflection. Let's create some more lights. Put several light sources. I will do three of them. You can choose a different scene, customize it as you like. If you hold Ctrl and drag the light to a different position, you will duplicate the light source. Press Ctrl again. From a distance, we turn it towards the hero and place it right in front of the camera so that it shines on a hero. Here all three light sources are created. I will, I will correct them a little. You can change the intensity and uh, color, I will do that. I want it to be redder here. Yeah, highlights have appeared. If you are using another render like Redshift or Octane, your result can be much better than mine. Uh, right now I'm just showing how I've done it with the standard render. Try to customize it as needed. The intensity can be set to more than 100 units. I will put 50 on this source and this is what it looks like with our camera on. Add some fire and everything will be fine, but I want to adjust the source a little more. I will put 
180. Now he looks like he really is in hell. Here I also want to set the intensity a little higher and move the slide back a little. Uh, yeah, so you know, this is pure experimental practice, move it as it's convenient for you, make sure that you get the maximum that you want. Yeah, the skull is a bit bright now, but I guess I will darken the skull a little bit, but later in After Effects. Don't forget to save incrementally. So now we have the final composition. I will pre-compose all the lights. I will call it light. And do not forget that we have a previous version of the project where all the models are. If anything, we can go back there and grab a depot or something else from there and everything will be fine. So far, so splendid. There is only one thing left to add fire here. We will do this in next part to not make the lesson too long. If you like the video, like it, subscribe and give any feedback in the comments. If you have any questions, text me and see you in the next part.